The following training is sponsored by the Niagara Library System. We serve our member libraries in Niagara, Orleans, and Genesee counties. Please visit your local library homepage and use your library card to get access to streaming videos, downloadable music, audiobooks, ebooks, and even more from the comfort of your own home. Thank you. Hi, good to see everybody today. And I wanted to go over a, a quick article here. It was written by Dr. Steve Albrecht. It was very interesting. And I think I'll be covering more on him. Uh, he has a lot of customer service ideas and writes a lot of books. He's, he's got uh, things on recommended books on verbal judo and that. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, in this particular one, this is from a Customer Service Manager. It's apparently it's an online magazine um, for customer service managers and professionals. And it's called a great model for keeping customers happy. Now, I do wanna mention, I believe that a lot of this starts top down and hopefully that you get good support and everybody is on the same boat. If you're not in your organization, then this kind of stuff can be tricky to do, but work within the parameters uh, that you have and uh, what's the old phrase you got to dance with who brung you right so uh, keeping that all in mind uh, let's take a quick look here companies large and small have been sued by unhappy customers who are merely looking for a little compassion humility and apology um, they talk about here he talks about author Malcolm Gladwell reminds us that physicians tend to get sued for malpractice by patients who believe their bedside manner is sorely lacking, abrupt, rushed, or dismissive. Being compassionate, being empathetic, um, it, it's showing that uh, can be really good though, okay? Um, so when there's a customer encounter, it becomes very important that all employees from uh, administration to the middle managers to frontline workers all uh, work hopefully from the same page. Um, generally here, uh, Dr. Albrecht goes on to say the solution is not to generally to round up your customer contact employees and give them classes on how to be nice to customers. Uh, many employees chafe when dragged into what they perceive as it says right here, smile training programs designed to make them more friendly. Um, it's not always easy to get anybody, he says, get employees who are tired, frustrated, or apathetic uh, to respond to the needs of entitled, angry, or simply confused customers uh, who demand a high level of service. So this is actually a nice little keynote right here, key. It's not always easy to get employees who are tired, frustrated, or apathetic to respond to the needs of any customer. Um, and so making sure that they follow regular breaks, making sure that uh, they are allowed to say switch out. So if they're working with one customer, that they have a, an employee would have the opportunity to say, I've explained it as best I can. Maybe, you know, X, Y, Z over here can help you better than I can. Um, so to relieve some of the frustration um, and, to help with the actual customer service because it's not just my business or your business, it's everybody's business. And if we can trade off, that can relieve a whole bunch of tension right from your employees. Okay. So uh, doc, the Dr. Albrecht goes on to say, consider the following model to help all of your people get through every customer interaction, whether it's positive or negative. And uh, it goes through the acronym GREAT. So it starts with greeting the customer with genuine sincerity. And if it's in person, real eye contact. Reassure the customer that you will take custody of his or her issue or problem until it's solved. Now, this kind of goes it doesn't really go completely against what I just said, because just because, uh, say for example, um, you get someone in the library and they don't know how to use Hoopla or they're not sure what to do, even though you may not be sure, you might recommend them to come to me as a teacher or come to one of my classes. You are still assuring them that you are taking care of the problem. You're following up. You. Uh, have actually pointed them to one of the better uh, responses that you might think would actually help them. You can always call me too in the office, so, but, 
Okay. So reassure the customer that you are, even if you're handing them off, that you're still involved in the process and that you will make sure that they're happy at the end of the process. Um, so we have the G, the R, the E, explain what you will do or have done for the customer, giving as much detail as they may desire. Hopefully, again, within reason. <laughs> A, act accordingly and accurately in terms of the duties you need to perform to truly solve the customer's problem. And again, that goes back to what I was just saying. If you want to truly solve the customer's problem, sometimes, as librarians, we know we don't have to know everything. We just know, gotta know where to find it. Um, and I know myself, I am not generally as familiar with Apple products. So if I know there's a person, I don't care who they are, but if there's a person on a library staff who knows more about Apple products than I do, I have no problem referring the patron to that staff member, asking the staff member first if it is okay, if the staff member has time to do it, and then referring them that way. And then circling around, checking, and saying, hey, did you get your questions answered? And people generally are quite happy with that, okay? Uh, and the last uh, for great is T, thank the customer for his or her cooperation, patience, and business. It's a great way to do customer service and I, Hope you find it interesting. It's not just another smile smile training session, but uh, if we can use these and follow through, hopefully we can have return patrons, return customers. All right, thanks. We'll see you in the next video. Bye now.